Good morning. So my name is Sandy Scott Roberts and I'm a civil engineer at the Orange County Water District. I'm also a wife and a mother of two daughters and a resident in Orange County. I decided to pursue a career in engineering from a recommendation from my high school physics teacher. After much debate on which bubble I should fill in in my college application, mechanical engineer, aeronautical engineer, structural engineer, I decided on civil and environmental engineer with an emphasis on water treatment. When asked why, my answer was simple. Everybody needs water. Humans can go 40 days without food, but we can't go more than three days without water, without drinkable water. So at the Orange County Water District, we make drinking water for Orange County. So how many of you today used the restroom, brushed your teeth, or took a shower? I'm hoping you at least did one of those today. Um, that water comes into our homes through reservoirs, groundwater basins, through treatment plants, pump stations, pipelines. Uh, we use that water for these purposes, laundry, dishes, showering. And once that water is used, it goes into our sewers. And it is, that is considered wastewater. That wastewater is being treated by the Orange County Sanitation District and purified by the Orange County Water District through the groundwater replenishment system to make drinking water. So I'm going to talk to you about that today. But before I get into that, I'd like to make a point about water on our earth. There has never been new water on our earth. We've had the same volume of water on our earth for millions of years. So what this means is that we have all, at one point, drank water that was one time dinosaur pee. So if you take that into consideration, all water is recycled. And water recycling is nothing new. Water recycling um, has been termed in the media toilet to tap. You can see all the um, media headlines uh, scrolling behind me, toilet to tap. That doesn't sound very pleasing. Uh, toilet to tap also is, is not correct. Uh, like I mentioned, and we all discussed the activities we did today, uh, we washed our dishes, or we took a shower, or we used the sink. Um, wastewater uh, is made up of a bunch of uses. Um, it's not only toilet. Actually, only 10% of wastewater comes from the toilet. So this acronym, Toilet to Tap, is missing that detail. It's also missing the detail of the treatment processes that take place in between the toilet and the tap, or the wastewater and to your tap. So I'm going to go through and kind of walk through those treatment processes now. So that wastewater goes to the Orange County Sanitation District first. Um, that's your wastewater treatment plant. And they go through a preliminary screening process. This removes big items from the treatment process, bowling balls, two by fours, things that shouldn't be in the treatment process. After that, um, there's a clarification step. It's called preliminary treatment. Solids are settled out, and then that clarified water moves on to the next step, which is called secondary treatment. Secondary treatment is a biological step. Much like the microbes in our stomach break down food to help us digest food, um, the secondary treatment process uses microbes to our benefit to break down organics in that wastewater. This water then moves on to the Orange County Water District groundwater replenishment system. We take it and we treat it even further. Our first process is microfiltration. This is a hollow fiber membrane or a straw um, that we use to filter out small, bac uh, small bacteria, small particles. Um, analogy to the microfiltration system is drinking ice water out of a straw. The ice is too big uh, and won't get sucked up into the straw. Well, that's exactly what happens with our microfilters, except for that our hole size in the straws, and the, they're called pore size, are actually one three hundredth the diameter of a human hair. So if you take a look at one of your strands of hair and imagine the size of one three hundredth the diameter of that hair, that's the size of the particles and the bacteria we're filtering out through this microfiltration process. 
After microfiltration, we send the water through reverse osmosis. Many of you are familiar with this treatment process. It's also used by bottled water companies. Um, what reverse osmosis is, is a thin film membrane. It's spiral wound in a, in a um, plastic pressure vessel. And we're, we're putting high pressurized water to push pure water molecules through that membrane. Unlike the uh, uh, microfilters, which I explained had a pore size, a diameter, the reverse osmosis membranes have a molecular scale cut off. So pure water molecules are all that's pushed through. Large molecules like pharmaceuticals, pesticides, viruses actually stay behind. So the pure water molecules, that's called permeate, is pushed through and goes on to the next step. An another analogy for a membrane is on our body, it's our skin. Um, our skin holds in our bodily fluids, it holds in blood, but it does allow sweat to diffuse out if you're exercising or if you're hot. So it acts very similar to reverse osmosis membrane in that it allows certain fluids to diffuse through it and others not. After the reverse osmosis, this permeate goes through the ultraviolet light or UV photolysis. This process uses UV light, shines it on the water, and this UV light breaks down any small molecules that may have made it on to the next process. We've all experienced damaging effects of UV light. If you're in the sun too long and you get a sunburn, this process acts in the same way in that it takes that UV light, breaks down small molecules, nitrosamines, 1,4-dioxane, um, endocrine disruptors, real small molecules that shouldn't be in the water. Once it's broken down, it's non-detect in a laboratory analysis. After UV light, the water is so pure that it's near distilled water. We've literally separated out the water molecules. We actually add minerals like calcium back into the water to stabilize it. We then test this water for over 400 different compounds. This is above and beyond what's required for standard drinking water, for bottled water. We do this voluntarily to ensure that our water is safe. We produce 100 million gallons per day of this purified water. That's enough water for 850,000 people. The water is, after the treatment process, we actually take the water and we put it into Orange County's groundwater basin. That's an underground natural reservoir made up of sand and silt layers. The water travels through the sand and is then pulled up through wells, production wells for cities, for farmers, for irrigation, and then sent to the customers, your home or the tap. Uh, the Orange County Water District uses the groundwater replenishment system water to continuously replenish the groundwater basin. So therefore water levels don't go down. Uh, we maintain safe water levels and enough water for the residents in Orange County. Does this only work in Orange County? No. Australia, Singapore have also very large treatment facilities just like we do that do the same thing. This is a cost effective local and sustainable water supply solution, especially for regions in drought. It also, for at least for Orange County, it makes us less reliant on imported water. Southern California relies heavily on imported water from Northern California, from the Colorado River, hundreds of, hundreds of miles away. By having this local supply of water in Orange County, this opens up those supplies for other cities in California. To date, we have made 230 billion gallons of purified water. That's enough to fill the Colosseum in Rome over 750 times. So the engineering, the science behind recycling water is proven, is defendable, it's nothing new. However, the public perception of drinking water that was once sewer water is harder to overcome. This is slowly gaining acceptance through public outreach, through education, things like talks like these, 
um, where education and, and, and people are realizing that water is water. Most recently, um, and interestingly, recycled water has been gaining acceptance through beer. Um, my husband, he believes that uh, humans can't go more than a few days without beer. So this is a, this is a huge <laughs> advantage for recycled water. Um, you can also come up with very creative names for recycled water beer. Uh, wastewater wheat, recycled red ale, drop in a lager. <laughs> These are just a few names. Uh, Stone Brewing Company also just came out with their um, recycled water beer. And they're calling it Full Circle Pale Ale. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you all have a chance today to uh, get over the yuck factor. And I'm challenging you. You can all reach down below your seats. And there's a bottle of water that is under your seats. Take a look at your bottle of water. It looks very much like a bottle of water that you can purchase in a grocery store. Um, the water is clear, as you can see. Um, and uh, so you can go ahead and uh, open your bottle of water and take a sip. So what does it taste like? Water. <laughs> It tastes like water because it is water. So myself, my husband, my kids, the residents in Orange County who've been drinking recycled water for the last 10 years to help supplement water supplies even during drought, we've all gotten over it. We've gotten over the fact that this water comes from wastewater and realized that all water is recycled. And this is pure water from the GWRS system. Cheers and thank you.